Okay, so the next order of business for me is to start populating this list with the data uh, that we wrote to the hard drive using our little file uh, format that we came up with. And now we parse it all out, but we still haven't displayed it to screen. The challenge for me is this. Up to this point in our videos, we haven't demonstrated how to bind two controls or two pieces of information. We only bound an array of strings. But now we're going to have to bind, uh, and we did it something like this, I think. Let me just go ahead and get rid of this. I think we did something like uh, just binding. And so if there's one item in your array, that'll work just fine. But if you have, you need to display not only the, uh, I guess we're going to call it the note name. Note. Well, I guess this would be the note location. The note location and the date created right below it. We're not going to be able to bind to just a simple array. We're going to have to we're going to have to create a collection of objects, or uh, we're going to have to create a cu custom class. Fortunately, the class will be really simple. We only need two public properties in it, so we'll need a a location property in our new class and a date created property in our new class. And then we'll bind to those new properties here in these two controls. So the first thing I'm going to do is add a class. I'm going to call that class uh, note. And then this is really easy. Prop tab tab, remember? And then we're just going to string location, enter, enter. Prop tab tab, string tab tab, and date created, enter, enter. That's all I need to do. Okay, so back in the C sharp code right here, I'm going to need to make some modifications. Um, my goal here is to set the item source for that list box. What's the name of that list box again? Note list box. So down here at the bottom of this thing, I want to be able to um, do this note list box dot item source item source equals and then something like um, I need a collection of something I'm, I'm gonna call it notes and so what is good notes going to be it's going to be a um, a list of type note okay remember we worked with collections before this shouldn't be that big of a deal so here we are creating a new list of type note called notes equals new list of type note. Great. Then inside of our loop, I'm going to create a new instance of um, of a note object and then add it to the collection. Now I'm going to use uh, that special syntax that we've already looked at to just do it all in one line. So I'm going to go uh, notes.add new note and then Remember this initialization syntax? Location. So we're setting uh, the property location in the class note to the local variable called location that I was just parsing out right here. And the other one I'm going to create is uh, date created equals, and um, I'll just do a date created dot uh, to, I think, too long date string is what I really want. And that should do it there. All right, so I'm not out of the woods yet. I think I've written all the C sharp I need to write to create a new list of notes, add a new note object to the notes collection for each file name in my on my isolated storage, and then I'm going to set the source for the list box to notes, but I still have some work to do over here on the main page.xaml. Uh, I need to set this binding syntax. And so to bind um, my list box to individual properties of each instance of the class, all I gotta do is just give it the name so I can just do location. Now if I spell it wrong, I think it'll give me some IntelliSense. No? No, I guess not. Forget I said that. <laughs> And so here in this text property, I'm going to go binding and then a date created. I think this is going to work. 
All right, so let's run the application and see it blow up for ourselves. Hmm, oh, okay, got a break point there. I'm gonna go ahead and let's let it rip this first time. Hey, look at this, got it. Got the name of the location and then got the date underneath it in the format that I want. Now the only, pr I, I've noticed this before, there's a problem here, there's some sort of offset and I think I know what that is. I think we're using a hyperlink button and by default the hyperlink button has a little padding, like 10 pixels of padding off here to the right. The other thing is I want to use a larger font, so I'm going to change the font size. But otherwise I'm binding to my list of files and they're going to display one after the other below it as well. So let me, let me make a few changes in the XAML. Uh, not the least of which is that I think from previous experience I tried all kinds of ways to make this work and the only thing that really worked was setting the margin to an extra 10 pixels on the text block so I'm moving it over to the right 10 pixels to line it up and, and make it look like it's right below it. Uh, I could go in and change the template for the hyperlink button but that's pretty advanced Silverlight and I don't really want to do that in this video. Um, the other thing I want to do is change the font size here. So I'm going to go font size and I can experiment with some different sizes. Uh, I know it's going to need to be pretty big. Uh, I'll go like 40 and see where that gets me. And then let's run it. And I think what I'm going to do is just disable that breakpoint for now because it's starting to get in my way. Okay, uh, problem. It's all the way off to the left and the right hand side ideally it would fall off to the right hand side because that's kind of a common heuristic in uh, the Windows 7 phone with some things not being visible off to the right but having it pop off both sides means I've I need a different property here I think it's horizontal alignment or a horizontal content alignment and I'm gonna try horizontal content alignment first because it, it's dealing with the content um, horizontal content alignment. So this will align the text itself within the hyperlink control to the left, I think. So let's see how that works. Okay, that's better. Um, I could probably just bump up the size of the font a tiny bit, but other than that, I like the way that it looks. And I think that's all I wanted to do in this video. So I'm going to stop right here. And in the next video, I think I'm going to move on. And now that we've kind of seen this in action, I'm going to get rid of that fake code I wrote in the plus button to, to create a new note. And I'm just going to go straight to the add.xaml page. So we'll see you in the next video. Thanks. Mm -hmm.